I have clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Sunday evening, September 2nd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service for the latest information. Looking out in the Atlantic today, we continue to have Tropical Storm Florence way out in the eastern Atlantic, chugging its way west-northwestward over the open ocean. We have a tropical wave in the Bahamas, which we're going to spend most of this video talking about. And we have an area of low pressure near the Texas-Louisiana border, which, if it had been over water for longer, might have developed into a storm, but it will not because it's moving inland and it's bringing rain to the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coasts today and tonight. Uh, again, Florence, way out here, uh, I'll mention her briefly at the end of the video, but we're going to talk mostly about what is now a dubbed potential tropical cyclone 7. This is the wave in the Bahamas we've been tracking. Here's a close-up view of it. It's called potential tropical cyclone 7 because it's not a tropical storm yet, but it's expected to become one and bring tropical storm conditions to land areas within 48 hours. And in this case, those land areas refer to the north central Gulf Coast, where this system is expected to end up by the daytime on Tuesday. So this is expected to develop. It has not done so yet. Uh, as we look at the satellite picture today, uh, you might see some semblance of rotation in these clouds. If you look closely enough, some semblance of a counterclockwise motion. This is the mid-level low. This is not a surface low, but you can see some rotation because all this convection has been releasing heat and creating low pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. But what you really need is low pressure at the surface, so we need to look at the surface winds. If you look around it, you'll see low-level clouds out of the east here. Here's easterly wind going out of it, easterly wind coming into it, and if you look at the end of the loop right north of Cuba, you'll see there's still southeasterly wind off the Cuban coast as well. So there really is not any kind of closed surface low yet, but there is a little bit of a kinking to the flow, southeast flow here, east flow here, so there is a little bit of a tropical wave axis uh, south or southeast of Andros Island here, but we're not really seeing west winds on the south side, so there's no closed low here, and that's going to be necessary before this can really strengthen in any appreciable way. Right now winds are about 25 miles per hour estimated by the National Hurricane Center, and if you look at a little bit of a bigger loop here, uh, here's our system, we'll call it PTC7 for short, Potential Tropical Cyclone 7, here's Florida, and as this moves northwest, the timing of when it finally acquires a closed low and starts strengthening is key. Uh, right now it's not expected to strengthen very much prior to reaching South Florida. It could be a tropical depression by the time it gets here, but even so, the winds won't be much stronger than they are now, maybe 25-30 miles per hour. So this is mostly a wet day tomorrow for South Florida and a gusty, blustery day, but nothing really significant. Once this gets out into the Gulf of Mexico, though, beyond South Florida, that's when we really have to watch to see if it can pick up some extra strength. Uh, at the moment, it's likely going to depend on exactly when that closed low forms. And over the southwest Atlantic right now, you can see these low-level clouds going from right to left. There's a rather brisk easterly steering flow in the low levels in this part of the basin, abnormally strong, and this is actually making it a little bit difficult for PTC-7 to develop that closed low. The faster the flow it's embedded in, the harder it is to get flow going the opposite direction on that south side. You can think about it, if all this flow is out of the east, it's very easy to have east wind on the north side, but to get wind in the opposite direction on the south side, Side, that's hard to pull off. And until that happens, again, this won't be able to strengthen that much. So for now, it hasn't made real, any real progress today in creating that closed circulation, but it may make more progress tomorrow. And so we'll watch this very carefully as it moves uh, towards South Florida and the Gulf. But development is eventually expected to occur, uh, likely, in fact, 90% chance, according to the National Hurricane Center, over the next couple of days. Uh, from that point forward, we can start looking at where it's going to go. Uh, this is the GFS uh, 500 millibar forecast valid for Monday morning, and this is where PTC7 would be near South Florida bringing rain, etc. We have this big ridge to its north. You can see this closed uh, isohypsy here, so big H. Uh, this is directing traffic toward the west-northwest, so PTC7 is going to follow this flow in a fairly straightforward manner. This is thankfully not a complicated track forecast because this ridge is to remain over the eastern seaboard during the next couple of days, and this is just going to follow the periphery of that ridge toward the north central Gulf Coast, and models are in very good agreement that somewhere along the Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama coastline is likely to see landfall of this system sometime on Tuesday night or Tuesday evening. 
and uh, so this is coming in quickly. Uh, that's why we have a, a tropical storm wa watch out already for portions of the Gulf Coast. We can see that here on the track forecast uh, in yellow from Mobile toward central Louisiana, and you can see the track forecast cone bringing this straight west-northwest, and then landfall expected sometime between Tuesday afternoon and uh, Tuesday night. And again, some strengthening is possible once this finally develops. Right now it's forecast to develop about here, but if it happens later, the system might end up weaker, and if it happens sooner, it might end up stronger. Uh, for the moment, if we look at the water vapor loop, uh, wind shear has started to decrease over the system, so conditions are becoming a little bit more favorable. You can see where the storm is here, and if you look at the cirrus clouds, you'll see this upper level trough outlined around it. So we've had a couple upper level lows up here. There's one uh, closer to the Florida Keys. And this, this flow has been shearing the storm a little bit, but you can see that the cirrus clouds in the northwestern side are oriented more southeast toward the northwest now. You can see them moving toward the northwest. This indicates more of a southeasterly upper flow now over the system as all of this convection is starting to develop heating and erode this upper level trough over Florida. So as that happens, conditions will gradually become more favorable for the system as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And although shear may not disappear entirely, it will be light enough to allow some intensification once the system does form as it's expected to. So some strengthening is possible. Right now the official forecast brings it up to sustained winds of 60 or 65 miles per hour at the time of landfall. Of course there is always some uncertainty in this forecast, especially given that this system is a little bit small. It's pretty compact and when it does form it is likely to be a small circulation. For that reason, uh, it can be a little bit more difficult to determine exactly how strong it could get right now. We'll have to keep an eye on it once it gets into the Gulf. Uh, but it, the good news is it doesn't have a lot of time. Again, this is coming in by Tuesday night, so it doesn't have forever over the Gulf to get strong. So there is definitely a limit on how strong this can get, uh, but it is possible that a strong tropical storm is hitting the coast by that time. Here's the wind speed probability product from the National Hurricane Center. Everything in yellow here is at least a 30% chance of tropical storm force winds impacting those areas that are shaded. And you can see that even outside that, there are some small probabilities if there are errors in the track uh, for tropical storm force winds to occur all along the North Gulf Coast. But really, the focus is going to be here on the Mississippi River Delta, Mississippi and Alabama coastlines. There's pretty high confidence that this is going to be uh, moving into this particular section of the coastline as a uh, almost all guidance points toward that spot right now. So we'll keep a close eye on this, as well as Tropical Storm Florence, again way out here in the open Atlantic and likely to stay there at least for the next several days. You might hear Florence's name uh, from time to time just because a couple of computer models try to sneak the storm all the way over into this part of the Atlantic where it gets too close for comfort to North America or Bermuda. However, it's not guaranteed to get there, and even if it does, it's many, many days away, up to 10 days uh, from doing so. If we look at the European Ensemble mean 500 millibar forecast for day five. This would be Friday. This is where the storm would be roughly on the model, and the idea is that if the storm is weak enough and far enough south, it might sneak underneath of this bit of ridging over the eastern United States and get a little too close for comfort to Bermuda or the U.S. However, Again, there's lots of uncertainty here because of how long range the forecast is, and what's more likely is that a storm that's up in this part of the Atlantic finds a way out to sea harmlessly, and that's probably still the more likely solution. Even if it does come west and get close to land areas, it's over a week away, so it's not uh, anything to worry about at this time. If it does become a legitimate threat, you will definitely hear about it from legitimate sources. For, uh, for now, uh, we'll just watch it in the middle of the ocean, and we will watch potential Tropical Cyclone 7, or what could be named Gordon, soon as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, likely to impact the central north Gulf Coast as soon as Tuesday. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.